Hi guys and welcome to a new episode of A Dark Soul. I'm Anita, I'm your host and a professional dog trainer and today we are gonna talk about no need to say no. So stay tuned and have fun. Alright, the reason why I think this is such an important topic is because lately I've come across a lot of dogs who seem to be called no. It seems like it's their name because it's the only thing they hear all day long. No, 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 don't do that, leave that alone, stay away from that. No, don't jump, no, don't this, no, don't that. And to be honest, I'm kind of annoyed, to say the least. Because it's not only absolutely not necessary, <laughs> it's so unfair to the dog. Because if we look at the dog's point of view, he has a reason for whatever he is about to do or already doing. And the reason is normally not to annoy you. So whatever the reason is, there is a need behind it. Your dog has the desire to whatever. And a simple no, not only is it trained aversively most of the time, but it also gives your dog no information. Absolutely none. Like, what do you want? There's no no info about what you want him to do or what he can do that doesn't annoy you but will fulfill his need, whatever that might be. And I get it. It's a lot easier to say no than to find out what your dog needs right now. But isn't that kind of unfair? I mean, we live with our dogs, not despite our dogs. <laughs> so it should be something like, I don't know, I think it's important to develop a kind of feeling to be able to see your dog's needs and most of all be interested in your dog's needs. Why is he doing what he's doing? What does he want? What does he need? For example, if your dog is trying to I don't know, steal something from the table and destroy it. Why is he doing that? Is he doing that because he wants attention from you? Then your no would be a reinforcer for his behavior because you're giving him attention even if it's bad attention. Or maybe he has a stomach ache and he needs to chew on something or even swallow something because it makes him feel better. Then you should go to the vet, of course. Or maybe he's just bored. Some dogs get bored and he needs a little bit more action or a little more contact with you. It's really, really sad if our lives get so busy that quality time with our dogs is shortened to a few minutes a day. That's not why we got a dog in the first place. And it's not how a relationship should be, any relationship. No matter if it's a relationship between your dog and you, or your partner and yourself, or your kids and yourself, or whatever. What kind of relationship can thrive on a few minutes a day? That's not possible. And the only attention the dog gets is no, don't do that. Yeah, you see where I'm going with this, so, all right. And, of course, sometimes we cannot see what it's all about, why our dogs do stuff and why they have certain needs, like chewing on something. Then I think the right way would be to accept the need. If we cannot understand it, that's our problem, not the dogs. And sometimes we need to float in a hot bathtub. And maybe our dogs don't understand that. Or maybe even our partner doesn't understand that. 
that doesn't make it less of a need. And of course, that applies to every kind of ridiculous sounds that are just recommended, like some sh or something like that. It's the same non-information for the dog, and it's just trying to suppress a behavior. It does not give the dog any information of what you want. It does not help your dog with his needs. It does not help your dog out of a situation he might not be able to handle. And if that's not enough, then maybe this will help. It does not give us any good feeling at all to say no all the time. The more rewarding <laughs> approach is to tell your dog what you want and then you can reward your dog because he will do what you want and you get rewarded because you get what you want. That's a nice feeling for the dog as well as for yourself. And this is not only about dog training. It's about the whole view of life. You can choose to see everything as a no or you can choose to see opportunities and possibilities and you can start asking what you want instead of saying no all the time. And if you look at your dog's needs and you see something behind it like he wants attention and sometimes we read or hear that we cannot give in to attention-seeking behavior because it will increase and um, the attention-seeking behavior will be rewarded and your dog will get extremely annoying. And in my experience, that's also not really true. Some dogs might need a little more attention and some dogs might be fine on their own most of the time. But the thing is, it's very individual. Every dog is different. And if your dog is someone who really needs a lot of attention, then he may be suffering if you only give him a few minutes a day and ignore every behavior you don't like. Because maybe he just wants attention and he has no other way of telling you than to be annoying. And if you ignore that, where would that lead? He would still need attention, he would still not get it, and he will become more and more direct in his approach, not to say more aggressive. <laughs> um, it doesn't mean that he will bite, it just means that he might increase in the intensity he shows the behavior. Like, in the beginning he was stealing socks from you because it was funny that you ran after him to get the socks back and if you ignore it he might just destroy them and next time he might steal your food or something that's important to you whatever so he can get your attention what i'm saying is if your dog needs something and you took a responsibility when you adopted him then you should try to fulfill the need if that's not possible because for example your dog has the need to eat all the time <laughs> And of course you cannot let him eat all the time because he will explode someday. But in this case you can um, be a little creative and do some food games and something like that. So your dog has a little longer to finish his meals and therefore eat a little longer. But for everything else like attention and stuff like that or a soft bed or yeah... To be honest, our dogs don't need that much. So, yeah, funny games, stuff like that. So whatever it is, try to fulfill it. And you might be surprised, but quality time with your dog where you do nothing else will do you good. It doesn't have to be something like we do a gazillion tricks or we do two hours of search games a day or 10 kilometers of walking or whatever. 
It just might be you sit with your dog and you give him a little massage or a little telling session or just let him be with you and lie next to you and have contact with you. For a lot of dogs, that's already enough. And not only gets the dog a hormone boost, you get one too. And that's why it feels so good to have a dog with you. And that's why quality time with your dog is such an amazing idea. And it shouldn't be cut short to a few minutes a day. And even on walks, you can either be on your phone or think about your job or your friends or your family or whatever or you can be fully in the moment and enjoy how the grass feels below your feet or how the snow is melting or how the raindrops fall off a leaf or whatever you can just be amazed about nature and about the connection with your dog and about how cute he is when he's sniffing some game trail or rolling around in the wet grass or searching a treat or whatever. It just gives you a little break. And that's amazing. You just have to embrace it. And you have to learn to enjoy that. And this is a way to live with your dog and to enjoy your dog. And let him enjoy you as well. Not only live next to each other, but really live with each other. And I think that's something we should really learn again. Instead of saying no all the time. And yes, that's possible. In all the time, I have dogs and I live with dogs and... It doesn't matter if they are foster dogs or if they were shelter dogs or I volunteered or worked or if they are my own. I have never said no or sh or whatever. It's not necessary. And if you have a situation where you just cannot see a way out, let me know. I'll be happy to help or contact the trainer near you. Just be aware of how he works and what methods he uses or she. And if you really try that and give in to the experiment and just try to cut that word out of your conversation with your dog. Try to see his needs, try to act on it and try to live with each other. You'll see you can have the best time ever. So I wish you an amazing time. I wish you so much fun. And we'll see each other next time. Until then, bye.